What's up guys, I'm James. This time the Rebel Base builds a diorama from Star Wars Jedi Survivor video game. Sponsored by Nova 3D. Let's check out the build. Thanks to the guys over at Nova 3D for sponsoring this video and sending me their amazing new Whale 3D resin printer. This thing is huge, fast and crisp and I've been using the Nova series 3D printers for a few years now and I've always had great results. And the Whale 3D however offers that larger print bed and a higher resolution UV light setup with new method for ensuring consistent coverage. Packed with features such as this auto resin feeder and detailed menus, this is a great solution for fast, accurate, no mess printing. And I have a whale of a time using it on this diorama. Go check it out in my description below. Okay, now back to the build. After playing Jedi Survivor, I was inspired to create a whole bunch of dioramas. But one thing that stood out for me was doors. Yep, doors. You may be wondering what the heck I'm talking about, but there are some stunning doorways in this game, and I thought some of them would make excellent figure display spaces. So I jumped into my 3D editor and used that inspiration, and a few hours later I was printing and painting some awesome Star Wars goodness. I applied a black primer ensuring I got into all of those grooves and the little details I'd modelled into the design. My plan was always to layer the colours up but rely on the black primer later within those crevices to make the details stand out. As you may have noticed, this design is loosely based on Pylune Saloon doorway. I love the way it lifts some of those traditional Star Wars shapes, like the edging around the doorway, and of course, the arabesque. Check it, getting a bit smart with the airbrush now, I applied the layers of paint from specific angles. The black undercoat is still visible in those lines, whereas the lighter browns are acting in the same way a higher light source, such as a sun, would capture the structure. As you can see here, I've masked off the doorway before applying a dusting of light grey, leaving the darker browns around the frame and inside the door surrounds. You can see here the results of that angled paint, leaving the darker browns exactly where I wanted them and the highlighted colours just on those logical spaces. If you've watched any of my videos before, you will know that I just love getting my fingers into the Tamiya weathering kits. The silver effect and rusty rubs do the job just great here. Using such a blunt tool as my finger, <laughs> <clears throat> ensures that the coverage is limited to raised areas, which further increases that contrast between details. This is me adding way too much water to the mix, and then dabbing it to make it look like I was trying to create depth and texture, which I was, honestly. With a large resin printer like the Whale 3, you're going to be able to fit a whole lot more on that bed. In fact, this model would have fit right on there, no issues at all. But because I offer a whole range of inspired SDLs over on the Rebel Base Build Patreon, I usually make them available with different cuts for smaller printers. But once printed, they fit and glue together just nicely. Having a background in video game asset creation myself, it's great to take colour and light theory and apply it to the real world models like this. One of those concepts is to look at the overall silhouette of a shape and apply darker shades to the lower segments and lighter the higher you go. I use this idea too when blending oil paints during the weathering stage. Although the silver highlighting method can be overdone, I couldn't resist getting my finger dirty again as I gave some of those edges a bit of attention.
I layered some light brown and grey to highlight an area on that walkway. This would eventually help Cal and BD1 stand out a little bit when put into their final positions. As this is an inspired build, the shape and the paint scheme differs quite a bit from the game, but I wanted to capture the essence of the location, so I added a bunch of different shades of red and brown to that rustic roof design. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, even though I applied that paint pretty rough. It didn't really matter because later I was going to be adding a whole bunch of weathering to that section. Adding the Pyloon Saloon sign was just kind of a nice finishing touch. I wanted to add some lead lighting to this build and in particular make that sign really pop. So I jumped online and I grabbed myself a bunch of battery packs, a flexible lead filaments, micro leads and I got to work. These things are really cool and when they light up they have a massive impact on your model. The battery packs that I got have a nice handy switch in there, they take two AA batteries and they're pre-wired. I've added links to all of these in the description below. Because this filament was going to be wrapping around the sign itself and bringing those ends close together, I made sure that I added some insulation to both of those solder points. I knew that I wanted to add BD1 sitting there on Cal's arm and if possible get some lighting into that head. So I added one of the micro LEDs to BD1's head. I hid those wires by rooting them behind Cal. Mixing a bit of laser cutting into this project, I love working with Adobe Illustrator and I wanted to make a cool base surround which could echo the meditation points that you see throughout the game. I also added a Jedi Survivor logo in there with a bunch of other Star Wars-y details. I used 3mm plywood and was able to get a pretty nice finish on this. It's always best to sand the plywood down after the laser cut, particularly if you're going to paint it. And it doesn't matter the size of the tool, it can still do the job. I layered this base piece with the different laser cut designs and it was designed to show details from the layer below. I also went for a contrasting colour to set the diorama off. The etched details show through nicely, but I did go back over this step later and created the exact same pieces, but this time in MDF. That did provide a much better overall finish at the end of the project. I added some weathering powder here between the diorama base plate and the surrounding piece. Well, as always, I had a blast making this little project, and it's one of many figure display diorama files inspired by the movies, TV shows, and video games, all over on the Rebel Base Build Patreon. 
The RBB Patron is a growing community of awesome people and I appreciate every last one of you for the support you've provided me and my content. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give us a like and subscribe and go check out the files on Patreon if you want to build some of these things yourself. Until next time, take care.